Now, speaking of money, there is a team who allegedly wants to spend to keep their future together. That is the Memphis Grizzlies. Fellow Zach, Zach Kleiman, says that Memphis, quote, well, I, I don't know what the quotes are yet. He says that Memphis will spend to keep Ja and the core together. Kleiman, the Grizzlies GM and VP of Basketball Ops, made it very clear on Sunday, Memphis finished with the second best record in the NBA and its MB and its highest playoff seeding at number two in the Western Conference. Memphis was eliminated in six games by Golden State in the semis on Friday. Worth noting that a large reason they got eliminated was because Ja was not there with that knee sprain. Of course, there are other factors as well. I mean, Dylan Brooks really was nowhere to be seen for the first couple of games. I mean, literally and figuratively for him missing uh, game three or game four, I think it was. Quote, we're not going to have any issues paying anyone who we want to pay. There's never going to be any issue with retention here. Lyman emphasized that is what owner Robert Perra wants. Memphis's goal is maintaining team chemistry while working towards a wi- while working toward winning a championship despite being one of the league's small market teams. Memphis ranked 10th in the league for merchandise sales recently with Morant 9th among players. This is also as I was just mentioning about the lack of a dynasty in the NBA. I think another shift that we're going to begin to see even more intensely is how the lines between small mid and large markets are going to blur even more and that's because the nba as a league is so prominent on social media i think i remember seeing a report that john morant was the third most watched nba player in terms of like social metrics i'm actually going to go ahead and see if i can i can pull up this list uh this is courtesy of nba pr sunday ranks as the most viewed regular season day ever on the nba's instagram the top three posts, ja, one of John ja Moran's blocks, I don't remember which one it was, got 13 million views on Instagram. That's also not counting YouTube, which is significantly bigger than Instagram in almost every metric. Fortunately, I wish there was more data on this. I find this shit to be really, really fascinating. Oh, this is actually really neat. Okay. Um, so this is courtesy of Open Doors. Again, I don't know shit about this website, but in... 20 last season 2020 2021 jaw had over 18 million engagements across twitter facebook and instagram of course he does not come anywhere near somebody like lebron who oh my god lebron had i think more engagements than everybody else on this list at 144 million but still that's also LeBron being LeBron and being like a global icon. We're not talking about that. We're talking about just basketball. John Morant, despite playing for a small market, brings a lot of eyes to Memphis because ultimately stars drive this league. The NBA is a star-driven league. So obviously, naturally, stars, regardless of where they play, are going to get a significant amount of airtime. Quote, we're not worried about small market notions or any of this or that, says Kleiman, this season's executive of the year. We're not going to have any issues whatsoever keeping together whoever we ultimately decide along the way. Uh, that's going to be really interesting to see how they how they ultimately pick and choose this. Because just looking at this roster, and we're going to go, we're going to look at their contracts, because why the fuck not? For 2022-23, they have Triple J, under contract he's under contract for the next couple of years because uh, he signed his he signed his rookie extension a little bit ago he's under he's under extension so he's not going anywhere John Morant has a team option which obviously they're going to pick up and they're going to extend him as soon as they're capable of he's definitely staying Dylan Brooks Dylan Brooks is such a fascinating player to me because he fits on Memphis, but I don't think he's that great of a player. I do not think that Dylan Brooks will justify what Memphis is probably eventually going to pay him. Because when I watch Dylan Brooks, I watch a guy who is very inconsistent from the perimeter. Of course, I think some of that could be fixed by tinkering with his shot, which I think is absolutely disastrous. Just from like someone who's played basketball, if you're a guard and 
your shot is just kind of like this wonky this wonky catapult motion reminiscent of someone from 1967 you have to fix on it even still he shoots 35 percent from three for his career so again not the end of the world but he's not that great of a shooter like he's not in a, he's not a lights out shooter he is painfully unathletic just really struggles to get to his spots on offense he overall dylan brooks just struggles to convert inside the three-point line guy shoots below 50 percent on twos uh let's what is it inside inside of three feet dylan brooks shoots okay he shot 68 percent this year I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He is an okay finisher around the basket, but it's just like not. I I don't think that Dylan Brooks is that great of a scorer. Like he's average. He's a little bit above average, I think. And in terms of defense, his defense is super wacky because this guy just fouls all the time. I don't think I've ever seen a player foul as much as he does and not also have a comparable number of blocks or steals. He just like... He just he just struggles in that regard for whatever reason. I do think, however, he'll get maxed. Um, Brandon Clark, oh my fucking god! If they do not extend to Brandon Clark, if they do not extend Brandon Clark, I want this guy on the Brooklyn Nets immediately. I have adored Brandon Clark for the last couple of years, ever since coming out of Gonzaga when I wrote that he was the best defender in the class. I mean, guy is just awesome awesome makes winning plays is relentless on the glass is a very respectable defender i mean dude he was thrust into this rotation and he looked fantastic he needs to be a member of this team going forward it's a necessity i mean this guy is like if you give him enough playing time he is a walking triple double and he is also a respectable defender still and just plays with high energy really has a lot of shades of the grit and grind Grizzlies. Just a guy who goes out, makes winning plays, plays hard. Um, Desmond Bain, obviously, is going to stay. Like, Tyus Jones, I think, is going to stay as well. DeAnthony Melton is another guy who is kind of on the fence. Been in the league for four years. Had the best year of his career this year. Can shoot. Is a better shooter than Dylan Brooks for all intents and purposes, at least over the last two seasons, and is also a great defender. This guy, ever since he was in Phoenix, he just has a knack for being disruptive and collecting steals on the perimeter. Per 36 minutes for his career average is two and a half steals a game. In this past playoffs, it was two. Two per game. Like, guy just makes plays. Makes plays on the defensive end. So there are a lot of, you know, decisions that Memphis is going to have to reckon with when it is time for them to talk about extending all these guys. But ultimately, I think that it's great that, you know, Kleiman is coming out and saying, hey, um, you know, money is not an option, which, you know, of course, that's him talking. It isn't his money. So obviously things can change 